companies can have all the high tech and all the savvy executives that they can find, but without the right policies in place, they're never going to achieve harmonization of platforms or find skilled workers or even find funding for new procedures. Well, joining us next is one of the key figures in bringing together the technology policy for the EC. He's Constantine Van Oranjo, who is the Deputy Chief of Cabinet to EC Vice President Neely Cruz. And I should also point out that aside from his day job at the EC, he is a member of the Dutch Royal family. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Your, your brief that you're doing there at the EC includes uh, the digital agenda for Europe, the digital single market, knowledge sharing, digital services infrastructure. It's a very full plate. How can you hope to achieve cooperation to meet your brief with, within the, the EU? Yeah, it's a full plate, but um, yeah, any kind of minister or listen commissioner has obviously a lot of things to do and I coordinate it, so it's not that I'm responsible for everything. It's, uh, it's really linking up, and I think that's what IT does, is to uh, link up policy domains and make sure that we are, we're moving into the, say, the 21st century, where data will be ubiquitous and where, where most processes will have uh, IT in them. So if, be it either in industry, be it also in the way we govern. Um, and really we're looking at um, how we can make Europe more competitive, how uh, we can restructure also the uh, the telecoms uh, industry to provide the kind of services and the kind of infrastructures we need to develop the services on top things like you know, like cloud computing and and um, e health and e government and etc cetera, etc cetera. so what's giving you impetus what's driving the push i mean everybody wants to do business internationally I and mean, it, it helps to communicate with people even just simple travel plans What's driving the push? Well, the drive is, is in a sense, global competition. Uh, we're seeing that our, uh, our competitors or uh, our trade partners are uh, investing, uh, investing a lot in this. For instance, China has been uh, connecting um, something like uh, uh, 34 million homes with, uh, with fiber, whereas in Europe we've been, this has been stagnating a bit. We see that uh, where Europe was a leader in the mobile space, we're now, uh, we're now trailing. So in mobile internet, we're trailing. And uh, this is really something that is, uh, that is because of our lack of coordination. Um, and we're trying to pick up on that now with fourth generation mobile um, to have more European approaches and more harmonized approaches. So we can really develop Europe as a common market. Can it also address issues of unemployment? I mean, I ask because you, you certainly would be more aware of this than most, particularly youth unemployment being quite high in Europe today. What, what impact might the digital platform or just the, the trend for digitization within Europe have on job creation or, or training? Well, typically ICT was seen or did, digital was seen as a replacement of jobs and people fear that, that, that you know, making process more automated uh, replaces jobs. I think McKinsey calculated that that's actually not true, that by every job lost, two and a half jobs are created and there are different kinds of jobs. But So there is a there's a, an allocation problem. So people might not have the skills anymore to fill the new jobs, and there that's a real issue. So, so that's retraining is what you need. So we need retraining. We need also um, uh, to look at our, our, our curricula to see uh, if they are still fit for purpose. And even in computer science, we're seeing that, uh, that, that um, graduates are uh, produced that do not have the skills that are in demand at the, at the, at the, at the, uh, the companies. You know, CIOs are looking for combinations of, of ICT with strategy or with security. So these combinations of skills and not pure um, you know, kind of systems engineers that we are producing at the moment. So I think we have an overall um, uh, shortfall in, in the supply of skills. Then there's the quality of skills, which means reskilling and and and, and rejigging our education systems, and then in, on the on the other hand, this, the demand is actually growing because everything is going digital. Because uh, we're, we're, I think we're seeing this the transition to digital, but also the digital economy in itself. I mean, the, the ICT companies are growing, so uh, there's a bigger demand, and there's a there's a lower supply, and there's and there's a problem in matching. So all of that uh, we see as a big opportunity, but also a big issue, because not only do we have in certain countries more than 50% youth unemployment, which is, which is massive, there's a massive social problem leading potentially to a lost generation. On the other hand, uh, we have this opportunity and the jobs are not filled, which is becoming a competitive disadvantage. If, we, if companies come to Europe to invest and they don't find the, uh, the ICT skills they need, then that's a real issue. 
So what should people be out there training for? What can you retrain? What are some of the jobs that are looking for applicants? I think, well, for instance, um, a whole new uh, skill set which didn't exist a few years ago is, is the whole apps economy. I mean, apps development is something which just wasn't there. Um, we need many more code writers. Um, but, I mean, I think this is something where we really need to bring the industry and the educators together and see, because this thing is going so fast. Um, you know, before we, if we use the traditional path of setting a curriculum and then developing terms and certifying these skills, before we've done that, you know, we've, we've moved on, you know, <laughs> uh, cloud computing has come in a rush and we're going to have Internet of Things coming, coming next and you, you, you continue to, to, to trail the real development. So uh, to have a more open and continuous discussion between or dialogue between industry and educators and government, I think, is extremely important. And how would you describe the IT skills situation in Europe today in just a few words? Low in supply. I think the quality of people is, is relatively good. Um, and, um, and we're seeing, I mean, this is the, the big advance of my job. You see basically all across Europe what's going on. You see basically everywhere in Europe, young people setting up small companies, web entrepreneurs are really emerging everywhere. Um, the cost of setting up a business is much smaller, uh, much lower now. Um, your computing can come from the cloud, which is a big advantage. And, um, and I mean, you, it's easy to sell across, you know, everybody's got these, these things in their pockets, so you really, it's easy to sell globally. So, so setting up a business and, and reaching a big audience or a big customer base is much easier. And as you see, it developing everywhere. So I think Europe has those skills, um, but we need more of them. And uh, we've been noting for now for 10 years that there's a skills gap in ICT. And we feel that it's, uh, doing nothing is not an option, even though we don't have that much competence in this area. We do think what we can do, we have convening power, we can bring companies together, we can bring governments together, and we can uh, make them more aware of what the challenges are, but also of the solutions that are already out there. But we just need to get them to the people that are seeking jobs. Now, you're an INSEAD alumnus. You have a law degree. You've worked at the World Bank, at a consulting firm, at think tanks. What does this say about the kind of education people need to be involved in ICT or in policy or altogether? Because this is a, a broad background that you bring to a rather complex position. Oh, I wouldn't say that my, the way I went about my CV is the one that you should follow. But what I do take from it is it, it, it helps to, to switch sometimes. Because and I switched from government to academia to um, to business or business, if you can call consulting business, but it's uh, it's a, it's a business, and, um, and that helped me because it's a very easy way to get a different perspective on things. Um, if you're too long in government, you start thinking like uh, like governments, and if you're too long in business, sometimes we've seen with bankers. Sometimes they don't excuse me, no <laughs> no uh, no bad comments. My brother is a banker, but uh, about bankers, but. Uh, as you see, you can, you can be get into a certain uh, um, reality or mindset and, and skipping or, or jumping is, I think, good. It says nothing about ICT. But the only thing you could say about ICT is that it's not about technology anymore. I mean, technology is one part of it, but um, I'm a lawyer and I did an MBA. Um, what brings me to technology is, is the impact it has on people, the impact it has on the economy. Um, um, and the impact on the way, um, way governments, for instance, relate to their people or to so relationships, which is not technical per se. So what do you think the CIO will be like in three to five years from now? I mean, it's already changed. It's gone from somebody with a little plastic pocket in his, uh, in his shirt with pens, and now all of a sudden um, many CIOs are on the boards of companies. Yeah, so that's the first thing. They come from, from the sellers and they move up, uh, up to the top floors of buildings, uh, typically. Um, I actually think that the CEO should have a lot of I. Um, I, think, uh, I think the work that ELAB has done in, um, in INSEAD actually under, underscores that, is that the, the, the tech savviness of, our, of, of the leaders should be much higher. So uh, the CEO or CIO as a as a separate entity, obviously it's important, but I think they will be, be much more integrated within the board um, and it's gonna be much more strategic asset. Um, but but uh, having said that, where, where I think the, 
um, maybe in the 90s, the CFO became the, 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 the real deal, the center of, of power. I think the, the I bit is going to move into that space and uh, it's going to be very close to the CEO. Great. Well, Constantine Van Oranya, thank you very much for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.